now we have the presentation by brother muhammad khan the topic is the book that shook the world so we have a 45 minute presentation which will be followed by a brief question and answer session of approximately 25 minutes duration so the arrangement for the question and answer session will be announced after the talk an avid public speaker having the zest for islamic management mohammed khan is a young dai who has spent more than 4 years in the field of dawa he delivers public talks on different subjects on islam and other religions and he has addressed audience via solo talks and symposiums he had the honor of working in the research department of the reputed islamic research foundation under dr zakir naik wherein he also got to learn from various madani scholars moreover he also had the privilege to interact with various scholars and duaats from throughout the world which helped him enhance his knowledge he has conducted several da'wah workshops currently pursuing his bachelor's in islamic studies from islamic online university and he is the operation manager at al asr foundation hyderabad it's an islamic organization ان الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حميم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز الحكيم قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters in islam i welcome all of you with the islamic greetings assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may peace blessings and mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you it's an honor for me to be here in this city of adur and to address you people out here i thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave me this opportunity to be here and then i thank the organizers who gave me this chance to be here and address a crowd like yours the topic which has been given to me is a very special one and i am pleased to speak on this topic and put forth my presentation the book that shook the world About 1448 years ago a book was revealed in the deserts of Arabia to a man named Muhammad peace be upon him and this book was called Al-Qur'an this book was called Al-Qur'an the glorious Quran and this was revealed by none other than God almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a last revelation a guidance and a mercy for the whole of human kind and this has been the way of allah this has been the way of god that he reveals his books he sends revelations as a guidance and as a mercy for his creation he sent many books many revelations but the glorious quran is unique because it is the last and final revelation sent by god almighty to his last and final messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him many of our non muslim brothers and sisters they have this misconception that the glorious quran this is only for the muslims or for the arabs which is not the case the glorious quran has been sent for the whole of human kind allah mentions this in the quran in chapter 14 surah ibrahim verse number 52 has a balagh lin nas that here is a message for mankind 
so that they may know that their Lord, their Rabb, their God is one Lord. So this book, Glorious Quran, this is a mercy, a guidance for the whole of humankind. Now, this book has done wonders and this book is doing wonders and inshallah, until the day of judgment, it will be doing wonders. Today in this short presentation of mine, I shall put forth some points which will leave you shocked or surprised if you did not know this before. Muslims, non-Muslims alike. This book, it changed the lives of people. It transformed people. And we know to change someone's thinking, to change the perception of someone, to change someone's outlook is very difficult. You try it out. There, there might be a smoker. Try and make him quit smoking. And you will realize that it is so difficult. The Arabs at that time, the people at that time, 1400 years ago, they were the most inhuman human beings. They lived li life like animals. They used to do all sorts of crimes. They were the people who buried their daughters alive. They were the people who married their stepmothers. They were drunkards. They were oppressors. They were gamblers. They were idol worshippers. And you name it, you have it. They killed each other just for small and petty things. This was their scenario. The Quran came and transformed their lives. The Quran changed them and made them the torchbearers of this world. As Allah mentioned this in the Quran, in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 1, Alif Lam Ra, Kitabun Anzal Nahu, Litukhrij al Nas, Minas Zulumat Ilan Nur. That we have revealed this Quran, Litukhrij al Nas, so that, O Muhammad, وسلم, you may lead people out from darkness into light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this Quran so that people come from darkness into light. It shook people that time, and until today, it is shaking people and leaving them surprised and shocked for good. Sir William Moore, one of the staunchest critics of Islam, who wrote against Islam, he mentions this, that the Quran is the only religious scripture which has maintained its form and purity since 1200 years. This is what he mentioned 200 years ago. Moreover, a professor in Shanghai University, a scientist by the name of Professor Tegate Tejasin, when he came across a verse from the glorious Quran, he was shocked and surprised. He had no option except to accept that this book is from God Almighty. Another example, Dr. Morris Bukail, a Christian scientist, when he did his research on the Quran and in relates to modern science, again he was left with no option to proclaim that this book has to be from God Almighty. Let us analyze what does this book offer. The Quran is the book which claims that it is from God Almighty. It is the only book, religious book, which claims that this is from God. In several places in the Quran, in Surah Jashia, in Surah Ibrahim, in Surah Yasin, it says, Yasin, wal Quran al Hakim, in Nakala min al Mursaleen, Allah Sirat al Mustaqim, Tanzil al Aziz al Hakim. That verily, by the wise Quran, you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa are one of the messengers on the straight path, and this is a book revealed by God Almighty, the All Merciful. Now, when a book claims this, so it needs respect. It needs to be looked into when it says that this is from God Almighty. It needs to be given respect. It needs to be looked into the claim. The Quran is the only religious scripture. And when I say only, I mean it. The Quran is the only religious scripture present today which has maintained its purity. It was revealed in Arabic 
Today also, present with us, it's in Arabic. The way it was recited, today also, it is the same as it was recited. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty Himself, took this responsibility to guard the Quran. Allah mentioned in Surah Hijr, chapter 15, verse number 9, Inna nahnu nazzalna zikr wa inna lahu lahafizun. That verily we have revealed this Quran and we shall guard it from corruption. Allah took this responsibility. No human race, no creature can come and spoil the authenticity of the Quran. No one can spoil the preservation of the Quran. And how is the Quran preserved? Try it out. Go to Egypt, to a museum by the name of Topkapi Museum, and you will find the oldest manuscript present over there. Go and pick any Quran from any city, any country, any house, any masjid, and match it with that copy, you will find the same. There is not a difference of a dot. The Quran, alhamdulillah, is preserved physically. Now, what if someone says, let's burn all the Quran? You know, we have such uh, psychic people present today. We had this recent uh, Quran burning day. Are people aware of that? Yes, there was a psycho who came up with this idea that let's burn all the Quran. I don't know what he was thinking, what was his idea behind that. Nevertheless, give it a shot. If you get all the copies of the Quran and burn it, burn all the copies of the Quran, still the Quran will be preserved. Because today, there are millions of Huffaz, there are millions of Hafiz of the Quran who have memorized the Quran by heart. And this is a miracle in itself. The whole 114 chapters have been memorized by these Huffaz. A six-year-old boy, a 25-year-old adult, a 60-year-old gentleman, a lady, a girl, you name it, you have it. The Muslims, they have memorized this glorious book. And this is not the case with any other religious scripture. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved the Quran and inshallah, until the day of judgment, he will preserve this. Now, the Quran puts forth a challenge for you. If you have a problem accepting this to be from God Almighty, Allah challenges you. The Quran, it gives you a challenge. Allah tells us in the Quran, in chapter 17, verse number 88. Do they say he forged it? Muhammad, peace be upon him, on whom the Quran was revealed. Allah says, do they say, these people, that he forged it? Produce a Quran like it. This is the challenge. Produce a Quran like it. Okay. 114 chapters. You cannot do it. No problem. Allah makes the challenge easier. Allah tells in chapter 11, Surah Hud, verse number 13. Do they say he forged it? Produce 10 surahs like it. 10. Not 114. Difficult. Mafi mushkil. 10 surahs like it. Okay. Cannot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the challenge more easier. Allah tells in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 23. Qul wa in kuntum fi raibim mimma nazzalna ala abdina fa'atu bi suratim min mislihi. That tell them, if they are in doubt as to what we have revealed to our slave, then produce one single surah like the Quran. One. One chapter like the Quran. And the smallest chapter in the Quran is three verses. Only three verses. Allah is challenging one surah like the Quran. Now here comes the amazing point. Allah gives you a challenge and then gives you a confirmation as well. Allah tells in Surah Baqarah chapter 2, verse number 24. And if you cannot, and of a surety you cannot, then fear the fire whose fuel is men and stone prepared for the disbelievers. 
this is amazing this book is challenging you do this and it gives you a confirmation that you won't be able to do this this is amazing this cannot be from a human being a human being he cannot put forth such a challenge why because at that time when the Quran was revealed the Arabs at that time they were masters of Arabic language they were masters and they felt proud in poetry in Arabic language they did not have these health centers or medical centers or scientific labs they were not builders they did not deal in automobiles they did not have these things but they were proud of their language they were proud of their poetry Arabic poetry and now this book it challenges them you proud of your language Arabic language produce something like this a surah like it and a human being he cannot do this trust me it has to be divine and from God why because it is like saying you go to an expert you go to an expert who is expert in his field and you challenge him that you cannot do this for example do we know who Michael Schumacher is anyone from the audience I always see hands from here only anyways he is considered to be one of the best racers and he drives car uh, fabulously now can someone go and tell him that you won't be able to take two rounds of this auditorium in your car can a human being make this challenge it's not possible until unless he is insane or let's take some Indian example we all know about Sachin Tendulkar considered to be one of the best batsmen can someone go up to him and tell him that you cannot hit one four you cannot hit one boundary you cannot make five runs a normal human being a sane human being cannot go and put forth such channel ch challenge so this challenge coming is from God Almighty Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam couldn't have forged it or couldn't have gone forth and put forth this challenge for the Arabs it is not technically sound now as I mentioned that the Quran it is a miracle in itself now this Quran it tells you about various aspects it tells you about the past about certain stories which no one knew for example in chapter number 18 the Quran it tells us about the people of the cave three boys and the story of the people of the cave then we have the story of a person named Zilqarnain then we have the story of Moses and Khizr we have the story of Adam and Eve we have these stories at that time there was no access to knowledge we did not have these institute where people were taught history it is impossible for a man to come up with these incidents in the Quran it is like saying you leave someone in the jungles of Africa since birth and then later on he has no access to knowledge no access to modern world he has no knowledge of history and then suddenly he comes up and tells you the history of India the history of USA the history of UK it's practically not possible so the Quran mentioned certain stories which no one knew at that time and which are historically a fact moreover the Quran it mentions certain events which were about to take place and this was really a miracle during that time Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his people they were expelled they were expelled from Makkah they were asked to leave Makkah and they were not allowed to enter Makkah now in chapter 47 Surah Fath the verse says that verily you shall enter the sacred mosque Masjid al-Haram in Makkah with heads shaved and head cut and without any fear at that time when they were not allowed to go in this verse was revealed telling them of the future and this is exactly what happened this is exactly what happened and these people 
Prophet Muhammad وسلم, along with his companions, they entered Masjid Al-Haram and this prophecy was fulfilled. Moreover, in 1614 CE, there was a battle which took place between the Romans and the Persians. There was a battle between the Romans and the Persians. And at that time, the Romans, they lost massively. They were ruined. The Persians, they beat them lock, stock and barrel. They were completely uh, finished. In 1614 CE. In chapter number 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these verses. What are they? In chapter 30, verse number 1, 2 and onwards. It says, Alif la mim, ghulibate rom. That verily, the Romans, they have lost. The Romans versus Persians. The Romans, they lost. Now, Allah tells us in the Quran, but within a span of few years, of three to nine years, they shall win back. They shall be victorious. Now, the Arabs at that time, and they knew that these people, these Romans, they are ruined. There is no chance they can come back. So much so that a person at that time, he came and he made a bet with one of the companions of Muhammad, peace be upon him, by the name of Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu. He made a bet of 100 camels. You know, camels at that time were very precious. And especially red camels, it was considered to be the Mercedes and BMWs which we have today. It was very precious. He comes and he bets 100 camels. So this person, he bets 100 camels that no way the Romans, they cannot win. The Romans, it is impossible for them to win. Time passed. Time went on. And in about 623 CE, Heraclius, the Byzantine Roman emperor, he took his army and he vanquished the Persians in various battles. And they were victorious. And Abu Bakr, anhu, he won the bet of 100 camels. This prophecy at that time was a miracle in itself. Because it is like saying a weak team. You know, even we have these uh, predictors. When you have the football or cricket World Cup, they predict. So and so team will win. But they only keep their parameter amongst the nice and good teams, the strong teams. Maybe Australia will win the World Cup, Cricket World Cup. Maybe India will win. Maybe South Africa. They don't go downstairs. They don't go, Kenya will win. Or Zimbabwe. Or Namibia. No human goes to such a claim. Because he knows if someone is so weak, it is near impossible for them to win. No human being will make such a claim. The claim at that time that the Romans will defeat the Persians was something like that. They were utterly defeated, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because He knows the ghaib, He knows the future, He's God Almighty who knows everything, what is behind us, what is ahead us, He revealed this, and this was a great miracle of the glorious Qur'an. Moreover, the glorious Qur'an is a religious book, which again challenges people, that if you have doubt, try this out. In Surah Nisa, Chapter number 4, verse number 82. Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبُّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عَنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِي اخْتِلَافًا كَسِيرًا That do they not consider the Qur'an with care? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, surely they would find therein many contradictions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving this challenge. And for a book to be from God Almighty, it has to pass this test that it should not have any type of contradiction. The Quran, it does not contradict itself. The Quran does not contradict modern science. The Quran does not contradict historical facts. The Quran 
it does not contradict moral values. But some people, they come up with certain things out of their own mind and out of their own idea, which seems to be a contradiction. For example, I'll just give you one example. People come up with this. They say that in one place, the Quran mentions that Adam, peace be upon him, Adam alayhi salam, he is made of water. In another place, the Quran mentions that Adam, peace be upon him, he is made of clay and mud. So you see, there is a contradiction. Now, what we say, this is not a contradiction. It is a contradistinction. It is a contradistinction. Because, for example, if I tell you, for me to make a cup of tea, I require water. I require tea leaves. I require sugar. And if you like a drop of lemon, you can add that. A drop of lemon. This is not a contradiction. This is a contradistinction. I require these things to make a cup of tea. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He mentions things in the Quran, it has a variety of meanings. It is the eloquence and the way it is put forth, it is beyond human imagination. So therefore, some things people bring up which might seem a contradiction but alhamdulillah the quran is free of contradiction and there are no contradictions in the quran <clears throat> now today we are living in this age of science and technology today we have this age of science and technology and so much so that many a time people are so much blinded by science that even if science says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, they will believe it. Trust me. If, if science tomorrow comes up with a theory 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, they will believe it. People have become so, uh, they have started trusting science so much. Anyways, science is a study. It gives us facts. There are certain scientific facts which are true. Many a time, there are certain theories which are scientific theories but which may take U-turns. For example, Sometime, some years ago, and when I say some years ago in scientific terminology, it means 100, 200, 400 years ago. Some years ago, science, scientific theory was that the earth is flat. Many scientists, they believe this, the earth is flat. Recently, we came to know that the earth is not flat, rather it is spherical. So now, let us put the Quran to the test of science and let us analyze. But let me tell you, that the Quran is not a book of science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E. -E. It is not a book of science. Rather, it is a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. -S. It is a book of ayah. It is a book of signs, mirac miracles. There are various scientific facts mentioned in the Quran which were impossible to be known 1400 years ago. Various scientific facts mentioned in the Quran, it was impossible at that time in the deserts of Arabia for a human being to know about these scientific facts. Today we know that this universe which we are living in, this came out and the scientists, they have mentioned that this came through a big bang, something known as the big bang. The Quran mentions in chapter 21, verse number 31. That do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth, they were joined together and we clove them asunder. Allah mentions this theory of Big Bang in, 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 in a nutshell. In the Quran, Allah mentions this in a nutshell. That do they not see, the disbelievers, that the heavens and the earth were joined and we clove them asunder. Mentioning about the Big Bang theory. Moreover, today geologists, they tell us that the earth crust, the earth which we live on, the earth crust, it is very thin. And the mountains, they stabilize this earth. And these mountains, they work as tent pegs. They have deep roots and these mountains, they are working as tent pegs, which stabilizes the earth. 
This is something which we came to know recently. Maybe in about 1880, we came to know about this fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, 1400 years ago, Jibala autada, and we have made these mountains as tent pegs, lest it may shake with you. You know, if there were no mountains, if you walk on this earth, it would have bounced, it would have shaked with you. These mountains, they stabilize this earth. They give stabilization to this earth. Allah mentions this in Surah Anbiya, chapter 21, verse number 33, that it is Allah who has made these mountains as tent pegs for you so that you may walk on it and lest it may shake with you. Who could have mentioned this scientific fact 1400 years ago in the deserts of Arabia when there was no era of science or technology? Let me give you one more example. In our school books, we studied that the sun is the center of the solar system. And all the planets, they rotate around the sun. Basic science. Later on, the scientists, they discovered that even the planets, they rotate about in its own axis. Moreover, the Quran, it mentions that it is Allah who has created the night and day. That it is Allah who created the day and night, the sun and the moon, each traveling in its own orbit. Each sun and the moon traveling in its own orbit. Now, until today, there are some scientific books, some books of science in schools, which teach you that the sun is stationary. But today it is a well-established scientific fact that the sun rotates about in its own axis. The sun has its axis and it rotates in that axis. The moon has its own axis, it rotates in its own axis and they don't clash. They both have their separate axis. Who could have mentioned this 1400 years ago in this book? It has to be from God Almighty and nobody else. Today we know about fingerprints, you know, this was discovered by Sir Francis Galton. He came up with this research that no two fingerprints in this world, no two fingerprints of two human beings can be the same. And this is how the FBI and the CID, they uh, catch thieves, it, it, is, it is helpful for them in uh, catching thieves. This is. A recent discovery we came to know. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Quran in Surah Qayama, chapter 75, verse number 3 and 4. Allah mentions that Allah is not able just to reconstruct the bones of human beings, but He is also able to construct the very tips of your finger in the perfect manner. Mentioning about the fingerprints. 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned this in the book? This is a miracle in itself because these scientific facts, these are recent theories. You go about, check on what I'm talking is simple thing which the science has discovered. <clears throat> Similarly, Time does not permit me to mention all the scientific facts. There are various. And these discoveries were done by a Christian scientist, Dr. Morris Bukail. He uh, weighed, he took the Bible and the Quran and put them to the test of science, modern science. And he uh, came up with this fact that the science and the Quran are in conformity. Modern science and the glorious Quran are in conformity, whereas the Bible, it contradicts modern science. The Quran speaks about the water cycle in great details. The Quran tells us how the clouds are formed, how they collect water, how we get uh, the rain. These things which were discovered recently, the Quran tells us these things in details. The Quran, it tells us in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse number 61, that the light of the moon is not its own light, 
Rather, it is a reflected light. This same message is repeated in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, and various other places. The Quran, it tells us that this universe which we are living in, this universe is an expanding universe. And this is a recent discovery which we came to know just some years back that this universe is expanding. Today, modern science tells us that the sun is going through a term appointed. It is moving towards a place and it will be exhausted. It will be destroyed. This is something which the Quran mentioned various years ago, uh, 1400 years ago, that the sun is moving towards its appointed time, its appointed term. The Quran speaks about various scientific miracles. Just one last miracle I would like to mention before I conclude my talk about this professor in Shanghai University. Professor Tegata Tejasin, he is the head of anatomy in Shanghai University and he spent a lot of time doing research on pain receptors. You know, recently this was discovered that our skin, it has certain pain receptors and due to which we feel the pain. That's the reason when you get a burn, you go to the doctor, the doctor tests, he pricks you. If you feel the pain, that means your pain receptors are intact. If you don't feel the pain, it means the burn is severe and the pain receptors are destroyed. This is how it works. Apart from our brain, there are certain receptors in our skin which are responsible for us feeling the pain. Now, the Quran mentions in chapter 4, Surah Nisa, verse number 86. It says, As to those who reject our signs, we shall surely cast them into hellfire. As often as their skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skins so that they may feel the pain, so that they may taste the pain. This is amazing. The Quran is mentioning about this recent discovery 1400 years ago that our skin is responsible for us to feel the pain. When this verse was shown to Professor Tegata Tejasan, he was shocked and surprised that how could a book 1400 years ago mention this fact that the skin, it has pain receptors. And after doing his, his research, after doing his research, he was so impressed that in the 8th annual medical conference in Riyadh, he proclaimed that La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his last and final messenger. So, dear brothers and sisters, Muslims and non-Muslims, when we reflect upon the Quran, when we ponder over the Quran, we come to realize that this book is from God Almighty, who is alone in his kingdom. And he alone deserves to be worshipped. He has sent this guidance, this mercy for us human beings, so that we may live our lives accordingly. We might come from darkness unto light. And for us to be successful in this world and in the hereafter, we have to follow the guidance of our Creator. We cannot go about by our own selves. And I would like to conclude my talk from the verse of the glorious Quran, wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions that this is a book which has been revealed to you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so that people may come out from darkness to light. So whoever accepts it, it is for his own good. And whoever goes astray, that is whoever does not accept this, it is for his own loss. I conclude. Wa akhru da'awana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.